And now um, I'd like to invite SDP's uh, daughter, Wijay Singer. Your minute starts now. Thank you. Um, Singapore is at a crossroads, significantly at a crossroads uh, in terms of our society, in terms of our demographics, in terms of our economy. Uh, this is uh, within a context of uh, uh, the world being at a crossroads. And I think the unfortunate uh, fact is that the PAP hasn't caught up with this. Um, the lacklustre budget of uh, uh, March uh, showed that very much. Um, what Singaporeans need and what's coming out very clearly is um, a, a government that looks confidently into the future and is able to uh, draw out um, uh, 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 solutions and, and policies uh, that are constructive, competent, but also compassionate. Um, unfortunately, our force uh, to progress in these last 50 odd years has meant that many, many people have been left behind. Uh, and I think that's one aspect of policy that we haven't been able to acknowledge and uh, uh, solve. Your time is just up. Thank you. Um, thank you very uh, much. When we compare ourselves with um, uh, the large uh, nations of Asia, China and India, uh, we are tiny. So, you know, yeah, we're nimble, but we're also very vulnerable. But when we address the issue of quality of leadership, it is this particular cabinet that saw the first escape from uh, the Whitley Road Detention Centre. You want to talk about quality of leadership. I think that says a lot about the quality of leadership that we've had in these last five years. Are you saying then, Vincent, that uh, on account of that, uh, all the other achievements that have been accumulated over the many years of good quality leadership, the quality of life that we enjoy, the quality of the education system that we have, the quality of health care, and those are not um, taken into account? Well, there was a UBS uh, report, the bank UBS, that came out about three days ago. And it said that Singapore's uh, actual quality of living relative to purchasing power is as bad as Russia. Now, Russia has a significant problems. And if after 51 years of progressing very strongly in relation to, uh, we talk about uh, uh, standard of uh, uh, living, in, uh, uh, in fact, our standard of living for uh, the average Singaporean is quite poor rather than quite uh, good after these years. And in the context of 200 million dollars uh, 200 billion dollars of uh, 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 reserves uh, 300 billions of international dollars uh, uh, of our GDP I think that doesn't really well, from what I've heard actually so far everyone has uh, commented and given their views and all the views are very much pro Singapore uh, at the end of the day is how you plan to get Singaporeans to where you feel Singapore should be so perhaps can we get more specifics uh, on what your party plan mm -hmm. to plans to do to try and get us there uh, Gerald would you like to start? It's good for the PAP uh, it's good for Singapore as well that's why we've changed the constitution to allow for more single member seats that's why we are providing for more non-constituency MPs so that more opposition voices and more alternative voices will be in Parliament let me also say though that Every independent international observer knows that Singapore wouldn't be where it is if not for its leadership team and not for the PAP. We are not responsible for everything, but it's the PAP working closely with businesses, with the community, with unions, with individuals that's made this place quite different from other places. And it's quite different from Russia, quite different from the places that the UBS report talks about us being equivalent to, because that's a report with many faults. There's plain data that everyone looks at, the World Bank, the IMF and everyone else looks at, shows that median incomes in Singapore, average incomes adjusted for inflation, are much higher than anywhere else in Asia apart from Japan, and by some measures higher than Japan. Lower end incomes and lower end quality of life, if you take housing and neighbourhood amenities into consideration, are far higher than anywhere else in Asia. Just do a walking around test and you'll know what I mean. Oh, I don't know what you mean. I mean, we walk around every week and I'm not sure whether our neighbourhoods are as you say they are. You know, I work with uh, people at the bottom of the scale and we see quite a different picture to the picture you've been painting. And I think we also need to talk about how whether or not median income is a good measure of what's going on. You know, we have people uh, in your party who are earning in the millions of dollars and I uh, um, have my lunch at the Beach Road Hawker Centre. But there's a 71-year-old hawker who is earning $650 a month. Your right. party earns less than, your uh, ministers earn less than that in a day. Right. So uh, we must not look purely at what's happening at the median, but we have to drill down to the individual voters whom we are here to serve rather than just to lead. 
Well, Nazim, you, you, agree, you agree with the survey recently, and out of more than 600 people polled, one in two say the rising cost of living is more likely to influence how they cast their ballot compared to other hot-button issues such as housing and foreigners. So let's kick off this segment by asking the opposition why the cost of living is the hottest of issues and we'll get the finance minister to respond to the issues raised. Uh, well, well I'm not surprised that that's a key issue because, you know, it's getting impossible to live in Singapore. We are one of the, the most expensive cities in the world to live in and I don't think that's an accidental thing. I agree with Gerald that it's, uh, uh, government has, uh, uh, you know, that's part of what government is there to do to ensure that people can uh, live well. Um, we... We have to remember, you know, inflation is significantly high at the moment. Uh, high, even the government itself is, 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 is issuing alarm bells, uh, sounding alarm bells about it. Um, other costs that we have that are also uh, 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 rising, healthcare costs. I know a taxi driver who, I was in his cab when he said he couldn't afford a cataract operation because of the exorbitant costs. Yesterday in the Straits Times there was an article about a young woman who... Um, uh, went to for a, a specialist appointment via the polyclinic, so a public patient, and she was given a three-month waiting period. And she was told by that hospital, and she asked three other hospitals who also said to her that if you went as a private patient, your waiting time is reduced to three minutes. And the difference in price is 25 for a, a polyclinic and 70 for a... But what's the one thing your party might propose to mitigate... The well, we are saying in, uh, initially... Zero rate GST for basic services. Um, GST as a consumption tax, uh, everybody uh, uh, who studies these matters knows that the uh, uh, GST, a consumption tax, is one of the most inequitable taxes you can ever devise uh, because uh, the rich and the poor have to buy the same amounts of rice and bread and oil and sugar. And so uh, we say zero rate GST for basic products and have a gradated GST all the way up to uh, luxury items. We also say that the HDB... Uh, a uh, 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 housing system should be run as a non-profit. Okay, that's, that's been brought up, uh, I think, already by Gerald. Nazim, your turn. Well, uh, from the SDP's point of view, um, uh, the, the key issue for Singaporean workers is the fact that Singaporean workers are being displaced because of cheap, uh, uh, cheaper foreign workers. You know, you're, you're, you can pay a foreign worker much less than you would pay a Singaporean worker. The SDP advocates a Singaporean's first policy, which is in many, many countries where, you know, you, you have to demonstrate why a foreign worker worker uh, has to be brought into your firm before you're able to employ that worker. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for all your views, Minister. Would you like to respond to all the views that have been <coughs> said well, so far? Whatever we do, let's not harm the economy and reduce the number of jobs available for Singaporeans. That's critical. Let's make sure that we provide good jobs for all Singaporeans. And that means whichever industry you look at, manufacturing, logistics, FNB, finance, when you talk to any business, they'll need Singaporeans, quality Singaporeans, and they need quality foreigners. They go together. It's not a zero-sum game. With the foreigners, we create more jobs for Singaporeans. And that's been the story of the last 10 years. In the last five years, we had many more foreigners coming in, but we brought unemployment down to 2%. That's virtually full employment for Singaporeans. And we raised wages, including wages for those at the very bottom, at the same time that we brought in foreigners. So let's keep economic growth healthy and sustainable so that we can keep creating good jobs for Singaporeans rather than try to squeeze companies the wrong way. On Singaporeans first, that's exactly what the quota system does Vincent, today. Vincent, your two minutes to speak for SDP starts now. I want to just pick up one point that uh, Josephine made before I go very quickly into this and that is about all of us being co-authors. Not all of us are co-authors unfortunately. One of the, the uh, 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 behaviours of the PAP over these last 51 years has been to silence, bankrupt, jail or exile many of the people, loyal, decent, honest Singaporeans who wanted to contribute to Singapore. And we know for example uh, these trumped up charges about Marxist conspiracies and all the history has shown us to be untrue. So we'll make that point first. But in relation to the SDP, I want to say the first thing that we need to do and the first thing that we have proposed in our shadow budget, which unfortunately the media hasn't covered very well, I encourage you to look on our website for it, uh, is to uh, turn our uh, public services into uh, uh, non-profit services. So do not make money from the housing of people. Do not make money from the feeding of people. Do not make money from the educating and the keeping people uh, healthy. And also, 
uh, the cost of government, which has to be reduced significantly, three, four million dollars a year is obscene by anybody's measure when you have people who are earning four dollars an hour. We also call for the zero rating of GST for lower goods. It's not true that only 40 percent of people pay for GD, uh, G, uh, GST. Everybody pays for GST because it's applied to um, uh, oil, it's applied to um, your writing materials, it's applied to everything that you use on a daily basis. We also advocate very strongly a Singaporean's first policy and the quotas does not uh, achieve it. We know very clearly because I work in that sector that uh, employers uh, find ways around it. Even the levy is also not something that is um, uh, a able to manage this minimum wage as well and the small and medium sector industry. Let's ground our economy. I agree completely with Tarman. Let's ground our economy for the Singaporean people for the future. Vincent of SDP, thank you very much. Thank you. Lina, your turn to...